After a 35 year absence, I'm returning to a place that I used to spend a lot of my time, Australia's Calder Park Raceway, particularly the mighty Thunderdome. My plan is, I'm hoping to convince security to let me take a reminiscent stroll amongst my old stomping grounds and hopefully snap a few images of my Porsche Boxster on the once iconic but now abandoned oval circuit. As luck would have it, there's an event happening on the main road circuit so with a wink and a smile I'm granted entry to the venue. It's a beautiful bright spring day and the air has that sweet tinge of race fuel. And immediately, I'm transported back to a time when, with my trusty Nikon FE2 and F3, this place was my office. My 1990 magazine cover shot of Holden Dealer Team, Holden Special Vehicles, and racing legend John Harvey getting air exiting this tunnel in Australia's first HSV club sport makes me very sentimental, but it also reminds me of the fleeting nature of life. John passed away almost three years ago now. I can't believe I'm in here. <laughs> it's literally been, God, it must be 35 years since I've been here. Last time I was here, I was sitting in the back of a NASCAR, holding on for grim death, with my arm around the roll cage and my camera in another arm, in another hand. <clears throat> well, the NASCAR driver tore around this track. Such a massive project this was, and it's just kind of been left to rot. It's just falling apart now. Let's get out and have a look. Check out the stands. This place has so much history. So much has happened here over the years. A lot of the infrastructure remains, but everything's fallen into disrepair. Modelled on the scaled down version of the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the US, it was built at a cost of $54 million and held its first race in August 1987, a year after my career began with the current motorcycle magazines. Sadly, the circuit fell silent in 2001 due to a family feud amongst the owners and it's continued its decay ever since. So the first thing I want to do is just have a good look around the car relative to its environment and see what kind of focal length I want to shoot with. More than likely it's going to be something 70 mil and above. I'm going to walk around with the RF uh, 24 to 70, uh, frame things up, see how they look, and then uh, I'll decide what lens I'm going to be using after that. And it's pretty bright out here today, super bright actually. So um, it's not ideal for shooting any kind of car, certainly not a white one but I can't pass up the opportunity to shoot at this iconic location, Calder Park Thunderdome. So we'll give it a crack and uh, see what we come up with. And one thing I like to always do is turn on the headlights, no matter the time of day. Sometimes I think the simplest shots are the most appealing. And the thing is, like I was saying about uh, your highlights, you want to keep them under control because you can always pull up shadow detail, but once you've blown your highlights, they're gone. Now I tend to prefer to shoot at the long end with cars, anything from sort of 60, 70 and up. But when you're shooting an environmental shot like this where you want to get bits of the scene involved in the image to tell the story, like the fact that we're at Calder Park Thunderdome, well then shooting wide makes sense. After a few shots on Pitt Straight, I'm tempted to do a quick lap around the bank circuit. I shot a lot of images here, including the cover of Car Australia's March 1990 issue featuring the Toyota Supra, the Mazda RX-7, the Toyota MR2 and the Nissan 300ZX. I know the asphalt is falling apart in places though, so I exercise caution and, 
and let the idea go. But the prospect becomes moot anyway, when a friendly groundskeeper enters the circuit on a mower and after a very long drive to my spot on the short straight, he asks me if I have permission to be here. I tell him I don't, but he's kind enough to ask if I've got all the shots I wanted. Not wanting to be greedy though, I tell him that I don't, but I'm happy to pack up and leave. We chat for a few minutes about a large fire that's appeared on the west boundary of the venue. I pack my gear and I leave. So three things I've learned from today's brief but magical reacquaintance with this hallowed place. First, reliving my youth only emphasises the rapid passing of time. I'm better off making new memories than trying to relive old ones. Number two, shooting a white car in bright midday sun is hard, but there are still shots to be had. When I shot cars and motorcycles for a living, I didn't get to choose the weather. Often, I didn't even get to choose the time of day or the location. I had to work with what I had. And shooting here today reminded me of how important it is to greet whatever conditions you're given with open arms and ask yourself, what can I do with this? And it applies to all outdoor photography. You just have to work with what you have and, and not think in terms of, I want to get this kind of shot in this location, but I'm in this location. This is the weather. This is the light. This is the time of day. This is the equipment that I have at my disposal. What can I do with all of this? And anyway, the third thing that I learned is I have to come back. I need to augment this new memory with more new memories. Because at 55, I honestly believe that that's the only way to be. To be alive in the present, but excited about the future.